Deb, you, you've got a bit more to say about Alpine, really. You've got sort of the most fire in your belly for what ever the hell is going on in that team. So, yeah, just talk to us a little bit more about that. I mean, there's so much to delve into. Yeah. Like, there is absolutely tons to go into. Obviously, it came out after the race that the technical director, Matt Harmon, and head mm. of aerodynamics, Dirk Didbeer, yeah, might be how you pronounce yeah. it, uh, they both resigned, and they've both been there for at least five years. And it just follows a long line of people that have just left Alpine, and it sort of yeah. shows... What is wrong with this team that so many people are not even just getting sacked? Like, you know, obviously Otmar was sacked. Yeah, but people but, like Pat Fry yeah, and... Um, Alan Permain. Yeah. And then even when you look at drivers, like, so obviously Carlos Sainz left to McLaren in 2018. Yep. And at that point, the season before, uh, Renault came fourth in the championship. Yeah. Like, and then Ricardo, obviously, Lisa left in McLaren. 2020 to McLaren. Nicole Piastri well. to McLaren. Yeah. Uh, Alonso to Aston Martin. And like... Every one of those, apart from Ricardo, left Alpine to a team that actually finished below them in that year. Yeah. So it's like, even though they are at a team that's actually performing quite well, they can see this team is a shambles. Yeah. Like, mm. I need to leave. Uh, obviously, a lot of them to McLaren, which is uh, quite funny. But obviously, the Viri and Enstone problem, like, obviously, Viri are responsible for the engine and the Enstone for the chassis. And like, th there were rumors last year that they weren't communicating on certain things, which is like, your own team that the whole yeah. point that you're a works team and the benefit from that is that you get to communicate between the engine department and the chassis department they don't even like each other like yeah. what is going on mm -hmm. here it's like it's mental obviously you know the team principal Bruno Famine like literally has had no prior experience of like I know he was like a director at like Persia or something like that mm. before but he's now never been like a team principal in F1 which let's face it you know, sort of, you kind of need experience for that. Yeah, I know you got. For a top team. Yeah, I know you got to get it at some point. Experience within the championship itself. Exactly. You know? So it's just such a a mess of a thing. Like the power unit itself is like a that's a whole other issue in itself. Obviously, mm. talk, I said about the Enstone and very thing there, but like their power unit is by far and away the worst power unit on the grid by an absolute country mile. Obviously before like they you know they were partnered with red bull red bull had their engines that was the thing holding red bull back essentially yeah, definitely and as soon as they left them well guess what within a couple of years they're yeah. now the dominant team in f1 so it's like oh great like and no one else has chosen to have Renault engines. No, they are terrible. Not only are they really slow in the straight line yeah. most of the time, the reliability. I, I mean, know. we saw Pierre yeah. Gasly last season. That Red Bull Renault was just, well, the, the Renault Red Bull even was so, so unreliable. Daniel Ricciardo, I think, what, 2018? <laughs> yeah, of DNF they had so there. unlucky. And then just their straight line speed. They had, you know, great pace around tracks like Monaco, but then watching them around the higher speed circuits, it was painful. Monza was awful last year. And they're stuck with this for another, until 2026, because yeah. last year they actually made a request to the FIA, can we work on our engine? It's so bad, can yeah. we work on our engine? They also, also did a request that can we like, have like some sort of even playing field for yeah. the engines? Mm -hmm. That didn't come true. They got re denied request to actually work on their engine. Yeah. So, you know, even if they make step forwards with their chassis, which is another thing which we can go into about how bad that is. <laughs> like, as you said before, that it doesn't excel in, in any areas. It's no. overweight. Like, it is just an absolute mm -hmm. mess. And it's just... I mean, no other, you know, team uses their engine. But when you look at Mercedes, you've got Williams and McLaren. You've got yeah. with Honda, you've got both Red Bull teams. Ferrari I'm, I'm has Haas and Sauber. Weren't were McLaren former Renault customers as well? briefly between Honda and Mercedes. Yeah, I think so. And that was also a terrible, yeah. uh, in terms of, uh, particularly the reliability was really poor, uh, from from memory anyway. Not quite to the extent of uh, the, the sort of Alpine of now and the Red Bull of, you know, around that sort of similar time. But yeah, sorry, Amy, carry on. No, no, it's just the fact that, you know, these the top teams, McLaren, Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari, obviously Ferrari and Mercedes make their own, but they're clearly good because yeah. the other teams buy off them. And then McLaren and Red Bull have, McLaren could easily, probably, not easily, but they could make an engine from, you know, their own manufacturers. And they haven't because they probably know that, you know, they'd rather focus on other stuff. Yeah. And they've gone and took Mercedes and it works for them clearly. So, and same for Red Bull, gone with Honda, going with Ford soon. They just, yeah. they know how to work it. The, the, the Red Bull powertrain project is crazily ambitious, but yeah. it's, it says a lot about you know, the state of Alpine, considering if Red Bull and Honda, you know, were to part ways and they didn't find any alternative, the FAA would enforce them to use Red Bull engines and uh, um, um, Renault engines, sorry. And mm -hmm. so uh, it, it says a lot about how poor the Alpine engine really is if Red Bull are resorting to making their own engines themselves, which is just, yeah, it, it, it speaks volumes about just how 
poorly put together that car is. And I've been saying it a few times on this podcast over the months that we've been doing it now. Um, it's it, the, the Alpine is sort of not a big what if team, but they have so many false promises. It sort of all started when they managed to persuade Daniel Ricciardo to join the team, yeah. and they were saying, "Yeah, we'll be fighting for podiums. We'll be fighting for race wins. Soon enough, it'll be championships." You know, the package that they promised him in 2019, you know, really under delivering on that. It was just a pretty bog standard midfield car. The year afterwards, Daniel Ricciardo put in some amazing performances, getting you know the odd podium here and there. But you know, by now, with the promises that they you know gave him in 2019. They should have won maybe a championship by now, or at least yeah. be in the fight. You know, this this terrible, I say trajectory, it's been it's been a plateau of progress for Alpine. So sort of up and down, it's a case of they can't really seem to break past that fourth slash fifth fastest car barrier, which, you know, if you're an F1 team, is such a boring ambition to have, really. And when there's so much movement going on around the team, when there's, you know, whether it's drivers or, you know, other personnel, they, they're not helping themselves when they are trying to better themselves if that makes sense it's it they're, they're not making any of the right steps at all to put it plainly they're not doing anything right like yeah. it, it, it's as brutal as that sounds and it shows with their terrible weekend this weekend you know no regulation change so they've had time to work on a car that they've had all season last season they qualify plumb last lock out the back row of the grid which yeah. is something nobody wants to do and then maybe in the race you think they'll try and progress from that you know benefit from other people's mistakes no they finished 17th and 18th which is just really really underwhelming considering you know how both drivers last season weren't too bad at all behind the wheel of that Alpine Ocon obviously in the first half of the season podium at Monaco Gasly in the second half of that season extremely consistent and quite quick mm -hmm. throughout so yeah it, it's it, yeah, it's a nightmare yeah. over at Alpine at the moment I was comparing them to to McLaren last year in the yeah. sense of starting bad and you know progressing but one McLaren weren't that bad even at the start last year they were bad but they weren't that bad no not locking and, out the back row going forward even if they were to progress that top five is so fixed so much quicker it's, so, yeah. it's just too good and they're only going to get better it's like you know Red Bull in Imola have got apparently you know they want to bring forward upgrades and that's going to take them to I, I, guess, <laughs> I guess to the moon yeah. um, and then you've got Ferrari and Mercedes always going to be ahead of Alpine for got you know a, a I can't imagine Alpine being that revolutionary to go above Ferrari, Mercedes, and then McLaren and Aston Martin again. They were so good last year at progressing. Yeah. I know, obviously, Aston Martin had a downward like spiral, but McLaren, but McLaren, they were incredible. And I think I can see Aston Martin doing the same this year, yeah. where they progressed the car over season. So I just don't know how Alpine are going to fit into that. Well, there was that feeling, sorry, Seb, just very quickly. Yeah, there was yeah. that feeling with McLaren last season that things are going to get better. Bear with us. We are going to bring the yeah. right upgrades. And again, no one really believed them. But with Alpine, there is absolutely <laughs> nothing positive coming yeah. out of the team at the moment. There's no sort of signs of any upgrades coming that will benefit the team. They're not going to have that same skyrocket progress that McLaren had last year especially mm -hmm. in such quick time as well that's just not going to happen I'm actually going to contradict basically everything you said there <laughs> and I am going to put forward a case for some hope for Alpine okay so obviously I've said about how big of a mess they are but there are things there that maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel right? how's, maybe how's a bit... so I'm intrigued so I've had a few points so obviously you know, there is still hope that they can better understand their new concept like they have taken a whole new approach and there is obviously all the reason that they could just go back to their old approach if it is if they look at this new concept and they look at the data and they realise okay this is a dead end they mm -hmm. still have, to have an okay concept from last year that they can go down which would put them basically sixth fastest car so I don't think it is all dead and buried and they were the slowest team in Bahrain right? like, don't get it wrong like they were miles away but I say miles they weren't a million miles away like you look at qualifying what two temps away from getting into q2 and at that stage of season where they knew they were going to be the slowest car and they knew they were going to be quite a long way back they were a second off red bull in q1 mm -hmm. and it's like i know it's a second but and in the race it was a little bit bigger but it's not the biggest if they were like two seconds back it'd be like okay they're really far back it is a massive step they need to take but that's what they're sort of they've banked that they are going to do now I don't actually trust Alpine. I don't think they will, but I don't know. There were and there were rumours. I think after testing that they are going to make a big upgrade. They are going to have a huge revamp throughout okay. the season. I saw some people saying it's actually going to be basically the A524B. Is okay, what, right, essentially yeah, yeah, what yeah, they're yeah. going to be bringing throughout well, the season. Well, that was almost what McLaren did, yeah, really, wasn't it? Yeah. And that's obviously what they're aspiring to be like. And you know, obviously, there's always the bog standard points. They are a works team. They've got two decent drivers. Yeah. Off track, they're doing quite well. You know, obviously that the, the fact they were able to sell 24% of the team for 200 million euros. Yeah. 
at, to a, a group of investors that includes obviously you know, the likes of Ryan Reynolds and Patrick Holmes and things like that. So, and that that is money that they are using. Yeah. So I remember Lauren Rossi said about it last year that he's going to get put in back into the team, and it already has done. And they've got a new whole new uh, simula simulator, which is like state of the art things like that. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to help them read into data a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the rest of it's going into their power unit development for 2026. So there is hope that if they because the fact they're so bad at the moment does also allow them to put to, all their resources yeah, into 2026. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the, the power unit development will be going they know they have to make a massive step forward in that regard so they're going to put so much energy into it they've already put obviously some of this investment into it so, um, so I mean it's, it's almost it's a blessing in disguise there. you know it's a case of maybe if they are you know to finish further down the championship than they would once like yeah more wind tunnel time exactly. at the very least you know the, you know maybe just sort of playing devil's advocate a bit there but more wind tunnel time the better especially with their funds they can sort of you know support and sustain that obviously you know if you remember back to drive to survive a few years ago alfa romeo had all that wind tunnel time available but they couldn't afford it with yeah. their with their tight budget alpine and pretty sure won't have the same issue and this isn't really you know to, to call them a back market team is a bit of a stretch now yeah this isn't quite to the same extent that we saw with hash look hash has a couple <laughs> of years ago and williams a couple of years ago as well you know they're not too two three seconds off the pace they are within touching distance yeah. of you know q2 which is which is you know more than you could say for Haas and williams you know just a couple of years ago and um you know it, it's just a case of it seems so monumental because this is a team that couldn't really afford to take another step back or not make any steps at all this yeah. is a team that needed to you know finally break through the, the the mediocrity wall as it were the mediocrity barrier uh but instead they've taken a pretty big step back so maybe that's just what's so monumental about it a team with their budget a team with even even their drivers, you know, a lot of people rate Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly, of course. So yeah, it's just a really puzzling one because especially going into testing as well, no one pre preseason testing yeah. anticipated this happening. They thought Haas would be comfortably the worst car, and uh, and yeah, Alpine would just sort of be again bang slap bang in the middle of the mm -hmm. midfield. But that clearly isn't the case. I think they could be though. I think they could be bang. The fact they've gone for the whole new concept does show there is some yeah. sort of there are aspirations to mm -hmm. be better than they were last year because I think I they mean, that, could that, that be, can't they be could all just bad. be sick. Yeah, they could. I, I think, think that's what it'll be. I think it'll. Be I think six. they probably might end up getting back to that point, but they they've taken a gamble to try and go further than six, and I yeah. do actually really like that from the team. Yeah, I know in the short term it's gonna look it's gonna be painful. But I'd rather them try something than just settle for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of, I kind of respect it. Yeah.